Dear students, in today's class, we will discuss the topic environmental history. In this module, we will discuss the concept of environmental history, the major themes in the environmental history, and we will also discuss different modes of resource use in human society. The core objective of this module is to examine the concept of environmental history and explore different themes covered under environmental history. In this module, we will discuss questions like what is environmental history? how it is different from ecological history, what are the major themes in environmental history and what are the different phases or modes of resource use in human society. After successfully completing this module, you will be able to explain the meaning, nature and themes of environmental history as well as you will also be able to distinguish between various modes of resource use from a historical perspective. In this class, we will basically discuss three topics. We will begin with a discussion on the concept of environmental history where we will discuss, discuss uh, what is environmental history and how it is different from ecological history. We will try to make a conceptual uh, categorization of environmental history. In the second part of this class, we will discuss major themes in environmental history. In other words, what are the themes, what are the areas in which environmental history concentrates and finally, we will discuss different modes of resource use. So, where we will discuss how human society has evolved over a period of time and in this process of evolution, in this process of human history, how different modes of resource use has prevailed in human history. So, let us begin with the first uh, topic of today's class that is conceptualizing environmental history or explaining environmental history. Often we come across that environmental history and ecological history are simultaneously used or they are interchangeably used. However, Ramchandra Guha and David Arnold in their book A Nature, Culture and Imperialism make a conceptual difference between environmental history and ecological history. As we know that the term ecology or the science of ecology is derived from the word ecology which is coined by German geologist Ernest Haeckel. Haeckel defines ecology as the science of relations of living organisms to the external world. In other words, ecology is a discipline which studies the living beings and their connections and interconnections with the external world, the habitat in which they, they, they live. And in that sense, ecology becomes a science or it is a knowledge in the, in the larger domain of science and humans are considered irrelevant or external factors in ecology. And ecological history therefore directs attention away from an anthropocentric understanding of the world. Ecological history as a subject of knowledge studies the pattern of ecological order and change and largely which are largely autonomous from human action. In other words, ecological history may be considered as a branch of knowledge which tries to understand nature or ecology from a historical perspective where human actions are largely considered as an outside or as an, as an external factor. And therefore, ecological history may be considered as, an, as, as a branch of knowledge which is an historical observation and scientific interpretation of the natural world or natural phenomenon. So, therefore, when we use the word ecological history, we mostly try to understand the ecological processes from a historical perspective, where the focus is on the nature, focus is on the ecology and, and focus is on the living beings in relation to their natural habitat. And therefore, human action or human action which, which significantly alters the nature or nature as a phenomenon which impacts the human society are somehow are somehow uh, uh, they remain outside the scope of ecological history. So, therefore, according to Ramchandra Goa and David Arnold, ecological history becomes a narrow branch of knowledge which focuses only on the uh, dimensions of ecology or which focuses only on changes in the uh, in, in ecology from an historical perspective. Whereas, Ramchandra Goa is of the opinion that environmental history makes the, uh, it, 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 uh, whereas environmental history becomes a broader uh, knowledge base. So, it studies human action or it studies human engagement in the physical world. In other words, environmental history, it studies the relationship between environment and the human society or where environment becomes a context and it becomes an agent 
of human so, so, so where environment becomes the context the agent and influence in human society so in other words when we use the concept environmental history we are trying to study the relationship between human world and the non human world or the physical world from a historical perspective in contrast to ecological history the scope of environmental history focuses both ecology as a natural uh, uh, phenomenon or a physical phenomenon and that of the human society it tries to understand the basic relationship interactions between the natural world and the social world or the human society so in that sense environmental history tries to study both the nature as well as the human society so let us understand what are the scopes of environmental uh, what are the scope of of of, of uh, environmental history so let us try to understand what is the scope of environmental history or what environmental history covers one of the significant scope of environmental history is to study the nature or the ecology but while studying the nature unlike ecological history environmental history tries to study nature in its dual capacity so environmental history tries to understand nature from dual perspective first it tries to study the elements of nature which directly or indirectly shape human life or human activity in other words environmental history focuses on climate topography animals vegetation soil forest which either promote or prohibit specific forms of socio cultural structures or economic organizations in other words environmental history tries to study nature as an element which significantly affects human society in other words when we study environmental history and, and 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 what we try to do is to study the human society where nature becomes a significant agent of determining the human society so the focus is on how human society has evolved over a historical period in interaction with nature how nature has been a promoter of specific forms of economic organization specific forms of social order as well as how nature has been a, 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 a how nature has prohibited or how nature has has created an obstacle to certain forms of social organization and and and, and economic organization so in that sense environmental history extends the margins of historical analysis to non human characters or non human uh, factors so while we by by history we understand it is the study of human society or it is the study of past of human society when we use the term environmental history we bring in the elements of nature so we try to study that how in a historical uh, uh, perspective or how in in the past human society has been affected or human society has been influenced with uh, the nature uh, or where nature becomes uh, an important or significant determinant of human organizations or social organizations of human society secondly when environmental history studies nature it also studies nature as 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 human action which alters the nature in other words environmental history tries to study human society when or, or as it uh, as it alters the nature or creates some changes in the natural landscape so as 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 we know that that natural processes like deforestation soil erosion uh, damming of rivers killing of plants and animals these are an outcome of human action these are human action induced natural changes so therefore human action is considered here as 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 a maker and unmaker of nature so in other words the important scope of environmental history is to study nature in its dual capacity nature as it shapes the human society as it influences human society promotes a particular kind of social organization and at the same time society or social action as it alters the nature as it changes the nature so therefore when environmental history focuses on nature the focus is not only on nature but rather the focus is on interaction between human society and that of nature so therefore environmental history tries to study the past of human society in relation to that of nature the second important scope of environmental history is that it tries to study nature as a cultural space so for environmental history nature is not just a physical phenomenon nature also becomes a space for cultural expression it is an element of cultural space and ideological artifact 
So in this perspective, the focus of fundamental history is on representation of na nature in art, religion, myth, uh, uh, literature, law, customs, culture, etc. So where emphasis is how nature has been how nature has been represented, how it has been described in different cultures. So therefore, environmental history tries to understand different cultures, different religions, different customs and traditions and try to say that how nature has been represented in these customs, how nature has been portrayed in these customs, maybe through, through an examination of the literary traditions, examinations of, of uh, literary works, novels, poetry is environmental history tries to understand how society understands nature or how society approaches nature. As we know that literature is the mirror of the human society, so therefore it tries to see that how nature has been represented in literature, how nature has been represented in religion, in customs, in traditions. So in that sense for environmental history, nature is not just a biological phenomenon or a physical phenomenon. Nature is a space of contestation, nature is a space of historical representation. Nature is represented in our literature, in our law, in our customs and traditions and environmental history tries to focus on this representation of nature in different cultural spheres or in different cultural uh, forums. Thirdly, for environmental history, history becomes a popular perception, experiences and folk traditions beliefs concerning nature. Unlike history where we study the past of human society, we study the pa past of human beings. Environmental history tries to study the past of human beings concerning the nature. So it is not just social organization but how social organization in the past have evolved in relation with, with nature because it is the, the evolution of human society or evolution of a specific form of social organization is dependent upon nature. So therefore, when nature is abundant, perhaps a different kind of social organization emerges in contrast where nature is adverse, nature is, 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 is uh, limited. So therefore, depending upon nature or, or it is the nature which, which influences human society, social organizations and environmental history while, while trying to study human history basically tries to understand human history in relation with nature. So in that sense, environmental history becomes more closer to sociologists and anthropologists than conventional historians because focus here is not on political organization of the past of human society, focus here is not on past economic organization of the human society, focus here is on how human society have evolved historically in relationship with nature, how nature has influenced human society. For example, when we study colonialism, perhaps history emphasizes the political, economic and social factors which saved the colonial history, which influences, which influenced the colonial history. But from an environmental historical perspective, colonialism becomes a site for contestation concerning nature. Colonialism becomes, becomes a specific form of social organization or economic structure which emerged out of specific forms of resource degradation or resource extraction. So therefore, environmental history when focuses on colonialism emphasizes on colonial exploitation of forest, emphasizes on colonial uh, uh, harnessing of water and it also emphasizes how specific forms of natural resources altered due to colonial interventions. So therefore, environmental history focuses on both changes in human society as an impact of, of, of nature as well as it also studies the changes in nature as an impact of human interventions from a historical perspective. So therefore, taking or adopting historical methodologies or ad adopting history as a method, environmental history tries to understand both the society, its past in relation to nature and it also tries to understand nature or the past of nature in relation to human actions or human activities. So in that sense, to summarize this part of the lecture, environmental history as a discipline or as a branch of knowledge is perhaps interdisciplinary in nature.
it combines several disciplines like art, religion, anthropology, history, politics and moves beyond the single focus on ecological sciences or single focus on history of human society. In that sense, environmental history, Ramchandra Gua points out, becomes more closer to social science than ecological history. Because ecological history tries to understand ecology or nature in a historical sense or in a historical perspective. So, their focus is more on the physical element of nature, the biological element of nature. Whereas, when we, when we use environmental history, the focus is more social because human society becomes an integral part of an historical understanding of nature. Whereas, in ecological history, humans or human action is mostly considered as an external factor, as an outside factor. Whereas, in environmental history, it is the human action, human intervention in nature that remains as a central focus of historical analysis. When it tries to understand nature, it tries to understand nature as an outcome of specific form of human intervention, specific form of resource extraction, specific technologies which was used to extract the resource. And when it studies human society, when it studies the past of human society, it does so by looking at how human societies have evolved because of certain interaction with nature, because of certain levels of extraction of, of nature. So, in other words, environmental history tries to, tries to examine nature as it has evolved because of certain human interventions, because of certain human actions and society as it has evolved because of certain uh, uh, resource degradations or because of certain impact of, of nature. So, to, 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 to summarize, we may say that environmental history is a branch of knowledge which tries to understand the interaction between human society and the nature from a historical perspective.